Hello everyone. As you all know, I was working on a project called Rise of Fati, but due to school commitments, I had to put it on hold. Now that I've completed my studies, I can finally focus on the project again. Upon returning to it, I realized there's room for improvement, so I decided to start from scratch. Additionally, I'll be recording tutorials to show you how I'm doing it. Today, we kick things off with our first tutorial on creating a third-person controller with different states. Feel free to correct me and provide new ideas. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Character Setup In the description below, you can find a link to download the character model. In the 3D character node, I created a new node 3D and named it Visuals. Then, I imported my character model called WeBot and made it a child of the Visuals node. Under the Character Body 3D node, I added new collision body nodes, choosing a capsule for each. The first collision node goes from the head to the knee and the second from the knee to the toe. I did this to ensure the character interacts correctly with uneven surfaces. Under Character Body 3D, I created a new node 3D named Camera Mount and beneath that, another node 3D named Neck. I added a camera 3D and positioned it according to my preference by placing the camera mount node around the character's neck and slightly moving the camera 3D node backward. Inside the visuals node, I created two raycast 3D nodes, placing them on both the left and right sides of the character, close to the character's feet. This setup allows us to check if the character is on a thin surface or not, which will help us change the character's state. Character Controller Script The script for the character controller can be found in the description below. Godot should provide a default 3D character controller script, which we will build upon. We start by capturing the mouse cursor when the game begins. The ready function runs as soon as the game starts, and we capture the mouse cursor using the input method. Next, we move on to rotating the camera using the mouse. We achieve this by creating an input function that takes the event argument. If the input event is mouse motion, we rotate the camera mount node on the y-axis uh, and the neck node on the x-axis relative to the mouse. This code will move the camera mount node along the y-axis. If the mouse motion was on the y-axis and rotate the neck node along the x-axis if the mouse motion was on the x-axis. To enhance character control, delete the last lines of code from the comment get the input direction to move and slide. Instead, use the following line of code which ensures the character always looks in the direction of the camera and rotates accordingly when you move the mouse. Adding animations and states. Now, let's add animations and states. First, navigate to the inspector node and set the default blend under the playback options for the animation player to 0.3. This will ensure smooth transitions between animations. We'll start with the move state by creating a global variable, move, and setting it to false. Then, make another variable for the animation player node. Now, let's create the process function, which will handle animation transitions between different states. Our first condition checks if the user has pressed any key that can make the player move and sets move to true. If not, move remains false and the character's idle animation will play. Adding jump animation. Let's now add the jump animation. We create another global variable called jump and set it to false. Under the if not is on the floor condition, we add the falling loop animation and also set jump to true. Otherwise, jump remains false. This animation plays whenever the player is not on the floor. Running animation. To make the character run, 
we introduce a new condition, named run and set it to false. We create two input maps, one called sprint, assigned to the shift key, and another called fire, assigned to the left mouse button. With that done, we set a condition for when the player is running. We change the character's speed from a constant to a variable. And we adjust the value from 5.0 to 1.3. This speed looks good when the player is walking and doesn't give the impression of sliding. You can fine tune it to your satisfaction. In the process function, we implement this condition. If the player inputs sprint, run should be true and the speed should increase from 1.3 to 5. Otherwise, run should be false and the speed should remain at 1.3. Animation transitions for movement and jumping. Now under where we set the player to move, we check if the player is in the jump state or not. We add the following condition. If running, the animation is set to run, and if not, we play the walk animation. We then return to the not on the floor condition and check if the player is running. If running, we play the running jump animation. Otherwise, we play the falling loop animation. Crouch state. The next state is to make the character go into a crouch state when walking on a ledge or a pole or something. We achieve this by creating another global variable named crouch and setting it to false. We also create variables for the two Raycast 3D nodes we created earlier, which we'll use to check if the character is on a broad surface or a thin surface. We do this by checking if both Raycasts are colliding. If they are not, it means the player is on a thin surface and crouch should be set to true, otherwise a crouch should be false. We implement this condition in the physics process by first checking if the character is jumping or not. The character should only go into the crouch state if they are not jumping. We return to where we have the animation conditions for movement and add another condition. If the player is in the crouch state, the animation player should play the crouch walk. Under the Elsa statement, we also check if the player is not jumping or crouching. In that case, the animation player should play idle. If the crouch state is true, the animation state should play crouch idle. Additionally, in the sprint input condition, we add and not crouch. Roll state. For our final state, we introduce the roll. As always, we create a roll state and set it to false. We create a variable and assign the collision shape that starts from the character's head and ends at his knee to it. In the process function, we add a new condition. We check if the player has input the fire button, is not jumping and is moving. In this case, we set roll to true. Play the roll animation and disable the collision body from top down. This allows the player to move under objects. To prevent the walk or run animation from playing while the character is rolling, we add not rolling with not jumping under the move condition. To exit the rolling state, we check if the animation is not playing or done playing the roll and set roll to false immediately afterward. When roll is false, we set the collision back on. Also, for the run condition, we add and not crouching to prevent the character from running when on a pole or a thin surface. And there you have it. I would love to see what you all build with this. And please feel free to comment with your thoughts on what could be improved or suggest easier alternatives. Next week, we will explore how to make the character climb walls, jump off walls and more. If you're interested, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. See you all next week.